kick us off today. We are live on Facebook. My name is Heather Michelson. I am the host of Facebook Live. My co-host is Bay Weinberg. It's so good to be here. Tell us about our guest today, Heather. My guest is Margie Kibo. It's so good to be here. Tell us about our guest today, Heather. Up uh, one second, we. I am just doing one little fix here. And we are good. Sorry about the little technical issue, Heather. We are good now. Again. Tell us about our guest. We had that little technical issue, but now we are good. Who are we hosting? Who are we having on our show today? Moji Kibo. Kerbal. Kerbal, welcome. And Thank Heather, you. Before I'm we... so happy to be here. We're so happy to have Margie. And Thank Heather, you. before you start today, I just need for one second, because we are live on Facebook and we want to scream it from the mountains that we are incredible as Integrate for Good, representing our board of directors, all of our staff, all of our friends and supporters. Everyone joins me in celebrating what you did last Friday. And for those of you who don't know, Heather Michelson gave a lecture at Harvard Medical School. And she spoke to medical students, dental students about Down syndrome, because we wanna make sure that people who are entering the medical field know about Down syndrome, know how to help people with Down syndrome live long, happy, healthy lives. And Heather, before we went live, told us she was not even nervous which blows my mind. I, so congratulations too. to Heather. We just wanted to say we are so excited for you. Um, and we want your voice to be heard everywhere because you are just an incredible teacher and an amazing advocate um, for yourself and for everyone else who has amazing talent and ability and lives with Down syndrome and deserves the best, the best health care. Thank you, Bev. You're welcome. So now to our guest today, another amazing community leader who I've known for a very long time, and we're so excited to introduce her to our audience. Heather, kick us off with your first question for Margie. What is your, what is your background for um, um, wedding, wedding College? So I um, work at Reading Area Community College and I am a professor but I'm kind of a different kind of professor than the professors that you think about that teach psychology or sociology. What I do is I teach reading and writing, and I also teach math to students to make sure that they're ready to embark on their college work and to be successful. Because what I wanna see is every student that comes through my program, comes out of my program and goes into college level courses and is successful. What kind of college do you do? What kind of, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of, you work with, with, with the children or adults? So I teach adults. Um, my students range in age from students who just graduated from high school who are 18, or some of my students don't graduate from high school and they go and get a GED, which is a graduate equivalency diploma, which means that they took didn't finish high school, but they took a test. So they are ready to embark on college level work. Um, and sometimes my students are over 60. They've had their whole lives, they've done something else. And now they're coming back and they also need to be successful in college. So I get them ready. Um, so that they can fly. Is it adult or, or a teenager you work with? Um, so my classes range. Um, I have students of all ages. Some are 18 right out of high school, like I said, and some are in their 40s, maybe moms coming back after they've had their children. Um, and I know we talked about this a little bit earlier. Sometimes my students have served time in correctional facilities and now they're coming out and they also need a lot of help to get back into the workforce and back to being part of our community because everybody should be able to be part of a community. So yeah. true. What is your background for this job? 
So my background is I went to college and I always thought that I was going to be a kindergarten teacher. And so I have a degree in elementary education, but my mom and dad said, you need a backup plan. <laughs> and so I also have a degree in math and I came out of college and I started teaching middle school math and reading and social studies and decided that I loved reading and writing. So I went back to graduate school and I have a degree, a master's with specialization as a reading specialist. So my love is really teaching people how to read and write and being able to communicate. And it could be little children or it could be adults. On Sundays, I teach Sunday school, three and four year olds, and I teach them a lot of language and reading and um, just literacy development going along with their religion. So I kind of work with all ages all the time. Wow. What kind of age do you work with? So it, uh, adults during the week, Monday to Friday. And then on Sundays, I teach Sunday school to three, four and five year olds. And I have an amazing, well, I have two amazing assistants, but one of them Bev knows really well <laughs> because Bev's daughter, Brooke, is one of my teaching assistants. Wow. And she loves it. And Heather, you actually met some of Margie's students because Margie teaches at Congregation Darhe Noam in Ambler. And that's where you came to teach about the Kindness Rocks Project. And when those students rotated through the different ages, Margie's kids were part of that. And they were the yeah. littlest, teeniest ones. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> yes. And you know what? As like even in addition to all the the meaning and impact that Margie makes in her teaching career. She also helps students in ways that sometimes people don't think about that college students need help with. And I was wondering if maybe we want to ask Margie about what else Margie helps organize through Reading Area Community College to help students be successful even outside the classroom with some of the other things, just the daily things that students need to deal with to, to be healthy and happy. So um, I spent a, a semester, I was on sabbatical and I wrote a resource manual that has resources. So any person on our campus can has a student that comes in and says, wow, I need to find a place for students with disabilities to volunteer. And guess who's on that list? That would be integrate for good. Um, but also students might need diapers or feminine supplies or food. And I have organizations that we can connect the students with. We on campus are lucky enough to have a food pantry and a diaper bank um, that we partner with other places to get materials for that bank. So if a student comes in and says, hey, I can't come to, to work, to school this week because I don't get paid till Friday and I don't have any diapers to bring to daycare. I can take them over to the pantry and get them some diapers because if you don't have diapers for your baby, you can't drop them off at daycare and then you can't come to school. So um, it's not just, we sometimes think that you come to college and you just have to go to class. But sometimes people don't have the things that they need to come to class. Um, think about if you didn't have feminine supplies, couldn't come to class. And, and our students were missing class for those reasons. So um, we put together a bunch of resources for them so I can help them. Students coming right out of prison. You come out of prison, with the clothes on your back yeah, and very little money. And so we have an organization in Lansdale that um, Bev's, mom, Bev's dad also works with and we um, provide personal care packages for them with clothing and um, shoes and all of those things that you don't think about because we are so lucky that we have them and we don't have to worry about it. But I get students all the time. They don't have that. They don't have books. 
So every year, twice a year, we have a free book fair where remember when you were in school as a little kid, you got the scholastic paper and your mom and you ordered books every, every month, or yeah. you went to the book fair at school. Well, my students don't have money to do that for their children. So when their children come home and say, I have to read for 20 minutes every day, they don't have any books. So we have this book fair twice a year where we set it up just like Scholastics book fair with all the labels and the beautiful posters and students can fill their bags that we give them, of course, that somebody will donate and they feel like they've gone shopping at the book fair. And sometimes my students will save those books and wrap them up for the holidays or a birthday for their students because for their children. Because again, they don't have money for those extras that Bev and I and Heather, we were so blessed that we always had all those things for ourselves and our children and, you know, nieces and nephews, everybody. Amazing. Go ahead, Heather. What kind of play do you do if you had, but what kind of play do you do in college? What kind of, excuse me, I didn't understand. What, what is it? Do you have a fun way to do in college? Do I have fun? Oh, I have fun. Oh, every- oh fundraiser. <laughs> fundraiser. So I have fun. <laughs> oh, well, I do have fun every yeah, day. There's a lot I of fun. In, I go into class and every day is fun for me. And every time I meet with the students, it's fun. But as far as fundraisers, yes, we have a foundation and pay, people can donate my um dear friend and colleague who passed away a few years ago he has i actually have two colleagues now that have um scholarship funds in their name for um students my colleague that i started his scholarship fund for his scholarship goes to a student who has started in my program and then um has finished their associate's degree and just shown a lot of promise and stamina and determination and that person receives an award each year. What kind of award did they have? So they they'll they um get us they're honored at a an award assembly before graduation and they receive a beautiful certificate framed And then um, we're hoping that there will also be a monetary component in the future. Wow, that's amazing. Isn't it? And and this year's student said no one had ever spoken to him like he was spoke, like we, I spoke about him. And it was just beautiful. And the most beautiful part was my colleague Dwight's wife was able to be there with us and um, hug this student and, you know, feel like her husband's memory was being honored. And that's, you know, the best we can do when our friends are no longer with us. Wow. That is awesome. Yes. Thank you. I know Margie is very, very busy with her work and her volunteer work, but I wonder if she- what What kind do you volunteer in your work? Yeah. So I volunteer with Integrate for Good, and I also volunteer with Mitzvah Circle Foundation, and I have not gotten to Jake's Barista this summer, and I'm very disappointed because I go back to work on Monday, Um, but I have been to the Perkiomen Valley Brewery, and I've been to the library, and I've um, been to Ursinus, and one of my, um, I have to give a shout out to one of your Ursinus students who started out as my little camper um, when she was in first grade, and it was so exciting to see her on campus thriving as one of your leaders at Integrate for Good, Olivia Negro. What do you do, what do you do in Integrate for Good at Volunteer? So I, um, I actually have a loom in my house and I am working on finishing my first mat and I have 
made kindness rocks and I have been at galas and I told Bev that I would volunteer for whatever committee. So I think I'm on the sponsorship committee or raffle committee. I don't know. I have received an email this weekend. So I'm looking forward. Um, I also know Natalie pretty well. Natalie was my daughter's roommate. So I'm excited that Natalie and Bev will be chairing the gala together. Wow. Yeah, Margie helps us in a million ways and is so supportive of what we do. Um, well, it's, it's, just... it's hard not to be supportive of Bev, isn't it, Heather? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you meet, Bev, you meet Bev and you <laughs> love her. So, you know. Oh, we have a village that helps to do this work. Well, Heather, I think we have time for one last question for Margie. Do you have one more? What do you, what do you get from, to me back from you? What oh, does like the community give back to me? Yeah. Um, well, so all of my communities, I think that if you don't give to your community, that you're empty. And when I am volunteering, it fills me up and makes me just feel good and happy. It is so joyful to be at one of Bev's events and to sit and make sleeping mats and talk to all of the volunteers. I met a really lovely lady a few weeks ago at the event who works in one of the school districts. And she also has a student with a child with Down syndrome. And we talked about how could we connect her students to my students at Reading Area Community College. And so that those connections and just being out there with different people is just what fills me up. And now that I am embarking on this new life challenge of being an empty nester, I have more time to um, give to my community. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, all of Margie's kids, her own kids, have helped integrate for good too. Absolutely. And now, her, so now her kids have moved on to really exciting things. She has a daughter who just moved to Chicago. She has a daughter who just started Temple Medical School. Speaking of medical school, maybe yes, Heather, that'll be I your next one. <laughs> we need to get Heather to give, you're a Temple alum, Bev. Yeah. I think we need Heather to give a speech for the new Temple Med students. I think that Casey would be will awesome. be your biggest cheerleader, I will tell you. I would like that. that would be amazing. That would be awesome. Yeah. And Marge's youngest son, who also helps out and like has taught kids karate and has done all different things in the community. He is going off to college himself. So all three are out of her house. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, yes. And we, we will, we will share Heather that I, I think we need to share the story as to how we met because um, I met Bev because she came to a play group that I was running for my son when her daughter Brooke was little and Brooke was turned away from another play group because she couldn't walk. Wow. And Bev called me. She was one. Lots of one-year-olds can't walk. And Bev called me and said, um, so we'd like to join your play group, but Brooke doesn't know how to walk yet. And I said, does she like to be with other people? Do you like to be with other people? And Bev said, of course. And I said, well, we don't discriminate. And so we were thrilled to open our arms to Bev. And that is how our friendship began a very long time ago, because those kids are now 17 and 18. Wow. <laughs> so crazy to think about. And I'm so glad Margie brought that up because people want to feel welcomed, right? Absolutely. And sometimes people walk and talk at different times or they might never walk and talk. They might get around in a wheelchair. They might talk in a different way. And uh, they might communicate, you know, through a computer. They might communicate through sign language. And um, I was looking for a place where I could meet, you know, other moms and where Brooke could meet friends as, you know, growing up um, and being turned away. You know, it, it broke my heart because I was looking for community. And when I found the community where Margie was and they were so welcoming and they said, whether Brooke can walk or not, you're welcome here. And that's Absolutely. how people want to feel. They want to feel. 
It is, I know. Our topic is creating inclusive communities, right? So, yeah. and we could talk to Margie all day, but unfortunately we need to wrap it up. It is 1230. Um, so Heather, should we share a little bit about our gala? I would you I think we did wait um because we had to I would like to say we need to help um Angela find new we need to help Angela to get new stuff for her house. Yes, and let's mention that. So it was just brought to our attention this morning that a family who we have featured on Facebook Live here not too yes. long ago, right, Heather? Yes. And one, I mean, someone we really consider part of our Integrate for Good family, um, Angela McFarlane and her husband and her son, Jake, and their wonderful dogs. Um, we they just- help, They need help with getting clothes um, in bed and all, um, Jake, all of the Jake stuff in the house. Yes, we found out that they have experienced a fire that spread to their house. Um, and they have substantial, substantial losses. Um, we just found out about it literally right before we went live here on Facebook. So we are gonna find out if there are things that are organized, um, efforts that are organized. If not, we're gonna take that on um, and we're gonna do what we can um, to help Angela and her family and to provide what they need. So stay tuned. We'll be posting on Facebook ways that you can help um, because they are incredible at opening um, vinyl closet records and Jake's baristas to us and inviting people in and helping build community. And now the community that they have built, we want to make sure we're there for them um, and can yeah, provide what their that. family needs um, to just begin healing begin. from this. We can't even imagine. It's just fresh news. So stay tuned. We're going to let you know later today how we can all help um, because we care about our community. We care about everybody in it. Um, and I thank Heather for wanting to use her show as a platform to help Jake and his family. So Heather, thank you for that, making that a priority. No thank you for interviewing me today, Heather. No it was great. And we have our gala committees running full speed now. If you're interested in being part of our Community Heroes Celebration, um, we have all different fun committees you can join. You can learn more um, right on the landing page of our website. Um, but as always, I want to thank our guest. Having Margie on was very, very special to me. Um, you too. Yeah. And you too. Um, and always our incredible host who now has on her resume, Harvard Med School Lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> I am so impressed. Oh my thank gosh. You. When I saw those pictures, I was like, oh my gosh, how awesome is this? Yeah. So Heather, why don't you wrap us up today? What guy be deep, watch your hand, and be strong. Yes, and we will see everybody on Friday. So have a great week, everybody. We'll see you have soon. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Hold on one second. <laughs>